Okay, let's get started. Welcome everyone. This is our graduate programs open house. This is a financial aid component. Uh, my name is Maria Flores. Uh, I'll be presenting today. And we have a couple of members on for helping us out. Uh oh, a little bit of a tech issue. So I'm gonna, okay. oh, there it goes. Okay. So welcome to LMU Financial Aid. A um, couple of things, if you could just please, please mute your audio and use our Zoom Q&A box to type in your questions anytime throughout the presentations. Um, we are happy that you all are here. Uh, go Lions. Um, and today our host and co-host, it's myself, like I said, Maria Flores, I'm the scholarship manager. And we have Jennifer Bond, who's gonna be helping us out with uh, Q&A. She is our Associate Director of Graduate and Professional Programs. Okay, so today's topics are going to be defining financial aid, um, applying for financial aid and its eligibility, the different types of financial aid, the cost of attendance, and then helpful tips, and last but not least, our contact information. So let's dive right in. So definitions of financial aid. So what is it? It's money to help students pay for college. Uh, the sources of financial aid entail grants, work study, loans, and scholarships uh, that help uh, make college affordable. Where does it come from? Financial aid can come from uh, federal, state, school, and private sources like an employer, church, or scholarship foundations. Applying for aid. So um, most important thing, we have to complete and submit our FAFSA, which is our free application for federal student aid, um, www.studentaid.gov. Um, you create an FSA ID, uh, which is your username and password combination. And this is your way of sending your FAFSA form electronically. Chances are, if you have, uh, you did your undergraduate degree, you perhaps did a FAFSA application. Um, the FAFSA forms ask for income and tax information from your 2020 income and taxes. Uh, for next year, it will be based on your 2021 income and taxes. Um, students must reapply every single year. Um, the application opens October 1st, which means the application is open already for next year. And uh, most importantly, which students tend to forget, is to add LMU on the application. Please make sure to add LMU, otherwise we don't have access to your information. Um, our school code is 001234. And then uh, another form of applying for aid is to complete and say, submit your departmental scholarship application. For that specifically, you have to check in with your college specific for more information. So basic aid eligibility. So be a US citizen or a uh, eligible non-citizen, um, you have to have a valid social security number with exceptions of students from the Republic of Marshall Islands, Federated States of uh, Micronesia or the Republic of Palau. Uh, you have to be enrolled in an eligible degree-seeking program or non-degree credential program. And then you must be enrolled at least half-time. Graduate degree-seeking students, half-time is three units. For a non-degree credential students, half-time is six units. And then most importantly, you have to maintain satisfactory academic progress, which we call uh, our SAP. So types of financial aid, uh, the one that we all like the most, which is our gift aid. It's our grants or scholarships that do not need to be repaid back. Then we have loans, which is our borrowed money that we have to pay back, usually with interest. And then we have uh, work, which is money earned by uh, the student as a payment of payment for a job on uh, campus. Grants and scholarships. Uh, so federal grants. So we have the Teach Grant provides. Uh, let me do something really quickly. Sorry about this. Um, our federal grants, so the Teach Grant provides program provides grants up to $4,000 a year to students who are completing or plan to complete coursework needed to begin a career in teaching. Uh, the eligibility for this particular federal grant is, uh, as stated before, you have to complete your FAFSA, be a U.S. citizen or eligible non-citizen. Um, you have to sign a, uh, a teacher grant agreement to serve that specifies the conditions under which the grant will be awarded. You can, have, you can find more information on studentaid.gov. A um, couple of key things within this particular agreement to serve, it has to be in a high uh, need field, it has to be an elementary school or secondary school that serves students from low income families, and then and work for four complete uh, academic years within, within eight years after completing your coursework of study. Um, a little note in the bottom that we have a little asterisk, if you do not meet the requirements of your service obligation, all your teacher grants you receive will be converted into direct unsub loans. So you must repay these loans in full um, with interest charged from the date of the teacher grant dispersed. So something to think about um, if this is something that you're looking into. 
There we go. Okay. Continuation of our grants and scholarships. We also have the California State Grants, which is our Cal Grant uh, TCP, which is our teaching credential program. So undergraduate Cal Grant A and B recipients who enroll in teaching um, credential programs uh, after they receive their bachelor's degree may be eligible to renew their Cal Grant award for one additional year. Uh, to do this, we have to complete our form uh, G44 and then return to the California and return this form to the California uh, Student Aid Commission, which we call CSAC. Um, like always, we have to complete our FAFSA. And then to learn more about this particular program, uh, you can visit uh, studentaid.gov slash teach. Another program and program that I oversee is our Golden State Teacher Grant Program. This, uh, it, the award is up to 20,000 for students enrolled in a professional preparation program approved by CSAC and working towards earning their preliminary teaching credential or their pupil personnel uh, service credential. Um, to find more information, this is a different, actually, uh, a different website, you have to visit uh, csac.california.gov, Golden State Teacher Grant, uh, for additional info and application instructions. Oh, there we go. And then we have um, university funding. So institution grants and scholarships are awarded directly by uh, your college. Uh, application is, is located on our website. So um, LMU financial aid, specifically type in graduate uh, graduate financial aid and you should be able to read more into this. Um, outside scholarships, this is for students, uh, can always apply for external scholarships, which means that our scholarships that are not um, awarded through the university. Um, two websites that we have here is schoolsoup.com or collegenet.com. Um, even on our uh, school website, we have um, universal scholarships, so you can go on there, you can look more into scholarships. Um, key thing, just be cautious, never pay, we should never have to pay for assistance in financial aid. Um, and that's why we are here to help you all out. Um, so just be cautious for anybody who's asking for money or particular um, private information that they should not be asking. The next bucket of money that we have are our loans, our federal loans. So the first one is our unsub loan, which is um, you can receive up to uh, 20,500 for graduate seeking uh, students and up to 12,500 for non-degree credential students. Uh, this particular loan doesn't require a credit check. Uh, currently our interest rate is 6.54 and our loan fee is 1.057. Interest rates, uh-oh. There interest rates uh, change every uh, year. So July 1st, interest begins occurring on the date the loan is dispersed. Uh, you have to complete a master promissory note and entrance counseling on studentaid.gov. Another loan that we have is our graduate plus loan, and this is for graduate uh, degree seeking students only um, in comparison to our unsub loan that's for both graduate seeking and the non-degree um, for the Graduate PLUS loan, you can borrow up to the cost of attendance minus other aid awarded. Um, for this, in this particular loan, uh, you will have to run, the federal government does run a credit check, so you have to be credit eligible. Uh, the current interest rate is 7.54, and then the loan fee is 4.228. Interest rates change every October 1st. Uh, interest begins occurring on the date the loan is dispersed, and then Similar to our unsub loan, we have to complete a promissory note and entrance counseling on studentaid.gov. Um, continuation of our federal direct loans, we have uh, the benefits of direct loans is that it's a fixed interest rate, uh, various repayment options, including income-driven payment plans, um, deferment options, and then loan forgiveness. If you work in a certain field, you may be eligible to have some portion of your loan forgiven. Um, you can find more information on studentaid.gov and on plans. Other loan options, and the first bullet point is very important, is our private alternative loans. This is our last resort. Um, uh, they require a credit check, possible variable interest rates, um, they may require a co-signer, and then the private lender is not affiliated with the government or the school. Uh, if you want to learn more about this, you can visit our, uh, our website at LMU, uh, undergraduate, under uh, available aid for graduate students. And then work awards, uh-oh, there we go, okay. So work awards, graduate students interested in seeking a part-time position as either a graduate assistant, a research assistant, or teacher's assistant uh, can search for available positions in 
Lyons job, uh, LMU's uh, job board on on-campus employment and opportunities. Um, students can er earn between 2,000 and 3,200 per academic year. And then your paycheck can be applied toward tuition expenses or used to assist with other educational expenses. And uh, students interested in work study must complete and submit a revision request form to the financial aid office. This form can also be found on our LMU uh, financial aid website. So let's talk about estimated cost of attendance. So what is the cost of attendance? Uh, we call it a COA. So it's a college total estimated expense for one year, including your tuition, room and board, books and supplies, transportation, loan fees, and miscellaneous expenses. Uh, a school's cost of attendance is used, is used to determine each student's eligibility, eligibility for financial aid, such as grants and loans. Uh, we provide an example here. So this example here is for the School of Education and it's based on a six unit per term. So that your direct expenses, uh, which are charged to the student, which is, which is your bill. Uh, we look at tuition, we look at graduate fees, the total direct expense when adding both of these is 17,724. But then we also have your R estimated indirect expenses. So these are not charged to you, you're not billed for these. Um, for room and board, we add room and board, books and supplies, our transportation, our personal and miscellaneous, and then our loan fees. And our indirect expenses uh, come up to 28,238. So in all, when we add our direct and our indirect expenses, we have a total cost of uh, 46,162. Uh, a key note that we have in the bottom is that your cost of attendance may be higher depending on your program of study and your, the amount of units that you enroll in. So you can see the cost of attendance by college uh, in the graduate section of our website. Okay. Helpful tips, uh, things to remember. Um, most importantly, submit your FAFSA. Remember that's an annual uh, application that we have to do. It opens October 1st and um, check your email frequently. That's the, our form of communication to all students, uh, especially if you're looking into loans or if you're submitted forms, please check your email. That's our, our form of communication. Register. Uh, uh, fin8 at lmu.edu with your spam checker to ensure that um, the emails are coming directly, they don't get lost in translation. And then ask questions and research online. Please ask questions, that's what we're here for. Uh, do not wait to contact us. Please do not wait to contact us. Uh, contact us, contact us, contact us. And then, oh, and we're almost done. Oh my goodness, that was fast. Um, and then our contact information, uh, email us. You can email us at fin8 at lmu.edu. You can call us. Uh, the number is provided here. We have our fax number. We have our Twitter. We have our website. Um, and then you are welcome to email our, email our office or call. Um, our lines are open from 8 o'clock to 5 o'clock, Monday through Friday. Uh, and we're here to help. That, that's our job. And now we're in the Q&A section of this presentation. That was really fast. My apologies for going so fast. Do we have any Q&As? I had a question. Um, I, my name is Amitza and I've just been, um, enjoying these sessions uh, rotating around a bunch tonight. Um, I'm looking into the ED, uh, program that right now I, I believe you offer online for educational leadership and social justice. And so I think you know, on the program highlights page, it mentioned like generous scholarships. And so I'm just wondering if that is something that is, if there's percentages, if that's for everyone, if there's fully covered or what kind of financial aid might be available for someone who's actually, I have my master's from LMU from 11 years ago, but someone who's looking to pursue the doctoral program and um, what that could look like. It follow the same protocol on the slides or is there something unique for that? For maybe someone who has another degree from LMU as well. Same protocol, you still have to apply. Um, Jen, are you on? I am, actually I was listening in. <laughs> Hi, Amita. So this is Jennifer. I'm the Associate Director of the Graduate Programs. And um, and to answer your question, it, there really is no set amount. Um, my, I would encourage you to reach out to the Program Director for the Doctoral Program, and they can better assist you as far as percentages and what they're able to award you as far as scholarships go. Every college awards um, based on their own, uh, based on whatever method they have determined uh, to award their students and I'm I'm really not entirely sure what type of um, percentages they award you know if they're some colleges 
base it on your financial need. Other colleges may uh, look at other factors. Um, and I'm sure that a lot of that goes into a lot of like the GPA. Uh, there's a lot of information that they consider when making that determination. So I would encourage you to reach out to the program coordinator so that you can get better details that we can offer as far as scholarships go. Thank you. Do we have any other questions? Yes. Is it Yasmin? Yes. Hi. Okay. So I have questions. I'm so sorry. My husband came in from work, and distracted me in the middle of this presentation. So is the recording going to be a little bit later so we can watch this presentation again? Yes, the, the recordings will be posted on the Open House website later on this week. Open House website. Okay. And then my second one, and I don't know if it was in the slides, but we do we know the price or the cost of this program? And I'm also looking at the educational doctorate in the social justice. Era. Yes, so if you visit our financial aid website on LMU, um, you can look up uh, specifically your programs. I provide here the links of financialaid.lmu.edu graduate forward slash graduate cost of attendance. Look for your particular program and you should be able to have a detailed uh, breakdown of your cost of attendance and your units and all that good stuff. Awesome. Any other question? Andrea? Um, do you know how much the um expenses for the program of counseling i don't know it off the top of my head but um similar to uh, the previous question if you go on to our uh, lmu graduate page um you look for your particular program you'll have there a uh, a breakdown of your particular program and um the units the costs all that good stuff okay and I'm sending a link um, where where that information is located. And just keep in mind that, um, like we mentioned in the presentation, that it's it really depends on how many units you'll enroll in. Um, if you're part time, full time, some students enroll in more units because they want, really want to speed along through the program. So it really depends on your unit enrollment. Just something to keep in mind. Mm -hmm. Caesar. Cesar? Yeah, um, I want to ask about the, um, so I understand taking two classes is the minimum to be able to qualify for all of the financial aid, like loans and everything here. Cesar, what program are you in? What program are you applying to? Well, I was interested in, uh, I'm still trying to decide, but it's between the um, um, counseling program and oh, okay. the school psychology program. Oh, okay. So to be eligible for federal aid, if that's what you're referring to, and I think that's what you're what you're referring to, you have to be enrolled in three units, three units or more to be eligible for federal aid. So that's typically one class. I know that there are some classes that are offered at two units. Uh, I've seen some, um, and those would not qualify if you're only in a two unit course, but you would have to be in at least three units or more to be eligible for federal aid. Got it. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? Also, if um, we're too shy to ask questions right now, feel free to email us. There's somebody always there to help you all out. We have a variety of different counselors who can help. Yasmin? I'm sorry, and I hope this doesn't sound like a silly question, mm -hmm. but is there like a any type of additional like discount that might be available like my daughter is currently an LMU student so are the chances higher of getting a better rate? Hi Yasmin, um, unfortunately we don't offer any kind of a discount um, to parents of students, you know, if you have a student applying. We, we do at the undergraduate level, um, if you have several siblings applying, there, there may be a discount that we offer there, but at the graduate level, unfortunately we don't, and it really is something that we have discussed, um, but at this time, there, there really is nothing that we offer. Great question though. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I have a question. Go for it. Um, so I'm trying, well, not trying to, I'm going to be applying to the Global Entrepreneurial Management 
master's program. And I don't know how the financial aid that LMU offers correlates and can work toward that. Because when I look on it and it, the financial aid aspect, it says that all need base will be, it's kind of dependent on your FAFSA. So like if I wanted to apply to the scholarships at LMU, it would still go towards that type of program, right? So every graduate department awards their scholarships independently from the Office of Financial Aid. And they all said they all have their own rubric as to how they determine eligibility for those students that are applying for their program. Most, I will tell you that most departments do look at a student's financial need. Um, if a student can submit a FAFSA, they do require you submit a FAFSA so that we can provide them uh, an approximation of your financial need. Um, but I also know that they do award based on a student's uh, GPA and additional information. So I don't want you to think that it's solely based on your, on your financial need uh, because every department is different and they look at your overall merit as well as your financial need to determine your eligibility. But um, that being said, you are eligible to apply for federal loans if that's something that you're interested in doing by submitting your FAFSA. Um, but I would reach out to the department to find out or to get more details on the scholarship process. Okay, thank you. Okay, you're very welcome. Any other questions? No? Well, I don't want to keep you all too long. Um, we'll, we'll hang out here, myself uh, and Jen. Um, but again, I'm going to go back to our contact us uh, information. Feel free to contact us, email us. No question is a silly question. Um, call us. We're here to help. Um, welcome to LMU. I'm, I'm excited that you all are thinking about LMU and we can't wait to be able to assist you all. Um, you guys are all ready to go. You guys are going to let you all go. Um, like I said, me and Jen will stay, stay around for a little just to uh, answer any questions that anybody may be too shy to ask in front of everybody else. Okay. You're welcome. Happy Monday, everyone. Have a great week. I have one more quick question. Okay. So with the program that I want to go to, um, <clears throat> I'm going to be applying to, um, the, the tuition is you're basically paying for tuition because it's also going abroad as well. So I don't know how that correlates because you apply at the LMU, but you're also being ex direct exchanged to two different schools abroad. So you'd be technically a student there so I don't know how, I'd be just paying tuition to LMU or would I have to pay tuition to the school abroad as well? That's a, that's a really good question. And you would pay tuition to LMU. So the billing, because you are an LMU student, the billing would be sent to you from LMU and you would pay LMU. Any tuition expenses that you accrue abroad, you, the university will manage that separately for each student, for each of our students. Okay, so I know also in the program, it also says that like you getting there and like housing is all covered by you. So I'd have to like, is there going to be like help to find like an apartment near the university or is that just kind of like I'm on my own, figure it out? Actually, I, I can't imagine that LMU would just say you're on your own and go figure it out. We wouldn't do that to you. But I would encourage you to um, to reach out to your program coordinator to get more details on how that program works. But I expect that the answer is that you will definitely have some guidance as far as far as that goes. So, um, yeah, reach out to them and, and they'll provide you all those details. OK, thank yeah. you very much. That's a great question, though. I'd be afraid to go abroad without, um, you know, without more guidance. So I imagine. Well, I've studied abroad before. So I was uh, just wondering if it's very similar because I was also direct exchange. Oh, OK. Yeah, I think it's probably similar to that. OK, thank you. You're welcome.
Andrea, any questions? Amitza? Um, I was just going to ask as well um, with the if uh, typically I saw that there was some of the the additional websites like School Soup, I think you mentioned right, and the College Net is that right? Um, looks like that SchoolSoup.com is timing out right now. But if there are any, if you know offhand, if there's any ones that are particular to you know doctoral programs or student students of particular community or anything like that is that is that the kind of place that we would look for something like that on those websites or is there anything offhand that you know that um the lmu scholarships list has because i was school school.com is typed out right now but there's yeah. also fast web fastweb.com i know that that's pretty popular among among students um and i know this is something that we didn't mention in our presentation and, it, the, and there's a reason for it we have actually uh, maria if you want to discuss the uh, the program that we have for students but you actually have to be an lmu student to be uh, able to access that information it's called scholarship universe um and it kind of works like all the other websites except it's more um it's more tailored to our population um you can apply for you know national scholarships and all the scholarships that are available in there for students have been vetted by by um by the company that we hire to um to vet them um and again we don't discuss it during this presentation because you actually have to be an admitted student to be to be able to access that website um it's called scholarship universe i absolutely love it because the more information you provide in there the more scholarships come up and um that are tailored specifically for your for all the questions that you're answering um but again if you decide to come to lmu this is something that you will have access to um once you're an admitted student but in the meantime there are other websites out there like fast web and there's a few others off the top of my head that i can't uh, i can't think of off the top of my head um but just make sure that when you go out there and you're doing your searches, they're not asking you to pay any money or you're, right. you're not providing your social security or any super personal information because it's, it's, then it's just not a legit company. Right. Well, thank you. I appreciate that because for sure, at least in the getting started, some of the scholarships to enter in, but it sounds like once admitted, there is continuous additional support or at least opportunities for that. So that's great. Absolutely. And then we also have some scholarships on our, uh, Maria, go to our personal page to LMU's financial aid section where we open scholarships throughout the year. Um, and we'll send out emails to those students that are eligible to apply for these scholarships that open up. There's not a whole lot of them, um, but you know, a lot of students mm -hmm. um, don't necessarily apply because they probably think it's very competitive, um, but uh, it's, it's a great opportunity for students to submit the applications for these scholarships because they are, um, it's a, uh, it's, they're just, very, uh, they're very generous. Yeah. And also um, to add is that myself and I've seen Jen do this is that if we get a scholarship that's we've, if we've vetted it, we populate that info and send it out via email. But awesome. a lot of students tend to disregard our emails. They think it's, they, they just don't, they don't, they don't apply and yeah. the application pool is, and ends up being very small. Got it. Hey, do you know offhand if there's ones for students who have studied at LMU and then are returning? Maybe big. Uh, do you know if there's one like that, or maybe that's something to just look out for? You know, like oh, LMU for... alum, LMU alum scholarships. Yeah. So, so yeah. So for like alum scholarships, um, we have something. We have scholarships like legacy scholarships. I guess that's that's the word for them, like legacy scholarships. But those, like I mentioned, I don't know if you heard me earlier that the, I see those really for our undergraduate population and wow. not our grad population, which is really wow. unfortunate. Um, but um, there are other opportunities, though. We don't want you to think that that's, you know, it's a fast no. They're working on new scholarships every day. Um, and that's something that I have sent up because we've had a lot of questions about that. So I have sent that up to our, to uh, our. Mm -hmm. I was curious, like, as if you mentioned siblings, but as if even, or if like partners or married, you know, couples or somebody kind of go in together. I'm just wondering if there's, you know, that. Yeah. For that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. At the undergraduate level, I do see that. Um, and they call it a legacy scholarship. Not not if they come in as a partner, but the, for example, if you have like a grandparent or a parent who also attended LMU. Um, but at the graduate level, we don't really we don't really have anything like that. Oh, no problem. Thanks for all that additional info. Sure, absolutely. Take care. Thank you all. Bye. Andrea, Gabby, any questions?
So we're going to wrap this up. So we're going to close you all out and let you guys go.